Hey folks, thanks for joining me on this journey with a new video. Uh, flying the F2H Banshee, and like a real life Banshee, this plane calls to me and you know screams and says, "Play me!" And also, just like a Banshee, it haunts me with how incredibly bad the uh, the, the guns are on it. Uh, so this is a love-hate relationship with this plane for me. So uh, we have a pretty even fight here. We've got an F2G Super Corsair on either side and then a specialized P51H against my F2H. So Matchmaker at least has uh, provided us with some interesting uh, goings on. Uh, the F2H is relatively new for me. Um, I have maybe 18, 20% of the way towards the XF90. and. Um, so I'm, I'm working my way through it, and, uh, you know, it flies pretty good. It's decently maneuverable sometimes. <laughs> that took a bad approach on that light fighter. And unfortunately, now he's behind me, and the other two guys dove rather than climbing. So I'm just going to dive, drop my bombs, and see if I can reset a little bit on how we're doing on this. Um, and uh, where this, game, this one really haunts me is, is the guns. Now, right here, they hit. And against the light fighter, they're pretty good. But um, they're 420s, and they have an issue. The, the issue is, while they're extremely rapid fire, um, the DPM is not super. And because they're so rapid fire and the DPM is low, what that means is every individual hit um, is less than you would expect. And that gets you into some trouble against other heavy fighters and against heavily armored aircraft. And you're going to see that throughout this video. Uh, so, outside of that, you got some nice bombs for 250 pounders, which you, know, you pretty much have to potato on one target. Uh, unless you've got a really good pilot, so there's some extra things going on. But against other heavies, you have this nice, uh, you know, slightly better maneuverability on them. And uh, that's helpful for putting them out of their misery, especially if they're bots who don't necessarily know what they're doing. So uh, this map, by the way, two of these command centers and then three garrisons, so nothing super big to write more about. I'm going to let Powell clean up the last of that there. Our bots have taken the mid, and uh, I'm going to clean up this heavy coming in. You can see there I'm, I'm just shooting and nothing's happening, right? So um, part of that is probably the usual server jank, which I noticed a good bit uh, when I was on last night. Part of it, though, is because each of those individual hits is so so low. I don't know if you have seen my video on armor and resistance. What that means is uh, each individual cannon shot has less of a chance of doing you know, significant damage on the target. And uh, that can really get you in trouble. And, and that's not, um, not anything new. The American Heavy Line was designed meta-wise to be a line that was um, you know, excellent in speed and, and altitude, so sort of excellent in the energy characteristics. Uh, decent in the maneuverability characteristics, at least in terms of what we're talking about with heavies, and then lights and guns, and so that's kind of how the line, both the heavy and the medium line, or a uh, light fighter, I guess I should say, line played uh, from uh, very early in Alpha uh, up until the 50 caliber buff a while back, and uh, which was excellent. I almost wish this uh, thing had 50 calibers rather than the 20 millimeters. One of the reasons I enjoy the P82 and the F82 so much, but you can see there I, I can't, you know, I can't one pass things uh, with this, which you can do in some other tier nine heavies, um, and uh, you just feel like some of those shots just aren't doing anything. So I'm going to push on, leave that to the bots to finish off, and I'm going to try and crush this uh, bot bomber here, just to get some uh, capture points, get my chevrons up, and then I'm going to go looking for the other zones. Really, this was just a matter of convenience. And one of the benefits of heavies, you can see me shooting again there, nothing, right? Like just barely registering anything. Uh, one of the nice things about heavies, especially at high tiers, is the speed on maps like this just allows you to travel from zone to zone so quickly. Um, you don't necessarily really ever have to worry about being out of it. Um, in terms of zone. So we're going to push on again, and uh, we're doing pretty good so far. We've racked up some capture points, we've racked up some personal points. I haven't seen the other pilots at all, and, and to be honest, I didn't see much of them in the match. Um, and you can see there that the Specialized P-51 is floating around somewhere. It looks like he's playing a little defensively, maybe. Um, and so I'm going to try and swap this zone out so my bombs are almost back. And I've got uh, these air defense aircraft to work on. And then I'll head over to the command 
center. Uh, I'm not super worried about the bombers. I can always shoot them down if I need to. Uh, I'm more worried about getting this guy. And then I see Powell has come over here in the middle as well. I want to clear his tail um, as if I can. But, uh, of course, this is probably not the best use, right? I'm trying to keep it vertical as I'm maneuvering uh, to the best of my ability. And, uh, again, just janking bullets that aren't doing anything over and over and over again. <laughs> And then finally, we sort of get some hits in. And again, this is, you know, it's, it's part of, again, part server gank, but partially it's just these cannons are not awesome uh, in my mind. Maybe others have gotten the work, and it could be very well the case that, you know, specialized, they're awesome. Uh, but I do have a pilot with um, Marksman 1 and Marksman 2 on him. Um, I am using a site. I am using gas-operated action, trying to try and get out as much of the... Uh, DPS as I can on them. You can see right there, that's 228. Uh, I didn't do a single point of damage, right? Didn't touch him. And uh, that's really frustrating when you're flying a heavy and shooting at something and nothing is coming off. In fact, here I swapped to the F94 because I know the armor and resistances on a multi roll are going to be not as uh, hard to deal with. And unfortunately, we're in trouble. I've got multiple uh, bots there on me. And as you can see, uh, if you're watching the minimap, which you should always watching the minimap. Uh, the <laughs> P-51H Specialized is uh, zoning in on me. He respawned and is coming. I'm going to dive um, with my high dive speed. Unfortunately, I've lost an engine. I don't have my restarter. I've already burned it. And we're dead at this point. So I decide I'm going to kind of loop through here. And I'm moving way too fast to do that. So I bang into the ground. Probably for the better. He had me anyway at that point and resetting on uh, is good and dying outside the zone doesn't cost me anything, right? I did force him to pursue me, brought him to the ground and great, we're moving on to better, bigger and better things. And of course, Powell is now uh, himself uh, zooming in to take care of some business, it looks like in one of the zones. Um, the mini map looks like he may be at the other command center. So that's awesome. I'm gonna go defend this one and we are at Squalline, which is perfect. Um, I can dump truck this heavy and these bombers, and that will reduce the enemy's ability to cap. Um, and since we are up a little bit here at the break, uh, the squall line, uh, without you know, less of the ability to capture zones, at least from the bots, you know, we have a good chance of stepping on this. So bomber is next. I love the way the F2H looks, by the way. It's just like, it's a like great looking aircraft. It really is. Uh, now, uh, here I'm getting uh, a lot better hits, as you can tell. One of the reasons that's happening is because I'm on the side. Um, and although we don't have the models anymore from the days when K Models 3D did have the models, I know that side shots uh, have less resistance and less armor than front or back shots. Uh, and so that's why I'm doing a little bit of damage there. All right, so bombers down, heavies down. Um, and if there's another, uh, the 329 is down, and I see the two P51H. I'm in a perfect position now. I'm in a high energy state. I've got boost. Um, I've got cooler. I've got guns. Uh, but I don't have good guns, so I can't really do this there. I just got to fly on. And he's engaged in a dogfight with a yak anyway, so he's not going to try to pursue, which is just as well. Uh, I'm going to loop over and take another pass at him. And he's low health, so this time I feel like I can do it. And there we go. Although it is the act that finishes him off again, not me uh, making it a 2 hits. Now, that in the meantime, the uh, bomber flight from the command center has captured this command center. And so we're actually down three zones to two. So we want to get the other uh, other ground attack aircraft out, which I can't do because again, it's too weak again. We'll finish him off and then uh, see what we can do about capping. Uh, although I do notice at this point, there's not a lot of red aircraft in the sky, and so I have some questions, and I also know it'd be easier to flip this middle zone right here and uh, maybe clear out one or two more of the enemy bots. And again, just you know, not doing anything with the guns, uh, which is really frustrating. So I'm gonna drop my bombs, which should give me enough. Flip this zone. Yep, there we go. And now I have a Starfire, and unfortunately this is bad because the Starfire bot is now locked onto me, and I'm gonna have to maneuver. Now, if you do have a bot and you're in a, in a position like this, 
you know, that Starfire can probably chase me down, so I need to maneuver and work on him. It's a bot, he's not terribly smart, and so if I can keep him near the train and keep him in the vertical, uh, eventually he's going to do some wacky shenanigans that no real pilot would ever do, and there you have it right there. So uh, that also earns me a Koza dub, and I realize there's only two left, and I realize we're now up three zones to two with a little bit of breathing room on the cap point, so I am thankful for that. So uh, there's the J21 in the background. If I can clear him, one left. But I'm realizing at this point, you know, we're around 20 seconds from the end of the match. There's not much more I'm able to do. Um, and despite my frustration with the guns, uh, this has turned into a pretty decent match for me um, in terms of personal points and also in terms of capture points, which is, of course, really for really spring ratings this week. So there you have it. Um, Conqueror, Winged Legend, uh, McGuire, I think that is, or McCampbell. McGuire, McCampbell. Maybe it's McGuire? Yeah, Winged Legend and Kozel Dub uh, across the board. 18K on that. And this is a good one. Gave me a lot of XP, which is great. Uh, I'm interested in unlocking the XF90 and playing around with it. Although, I'm not, hopefully with six of the 20 millimeters, you do a little better. I haven't checked the stats on those yet to see if they're the same as the Tier 9s. Um, interestingly, these Mark 12 uh, guns, the Colts, are, they're revolver guns, um, and they're essentially identical in real life anyway, historically, to the 213-20s, uh, but they don't act like the 213-20s, sadly. So five sectors captured, a lot of capture points, mostly on the attack, although occasionally on the defense as well. Died that one time. And I'm glad the P-51 got credit for that since I um, slammed into the ground. Um, and, and we did fairly well. Uh, I'm very excited about um, kind of how this went in it. It had been an up and down night for me match-wise uh, in terms of, you know, what was going on. And this one was a close one even with the 18K I put into it. Uh, but the an up and down with the F-2H, uh, I just struggled with it. I ended up uh, redoing the pilot a little bit. And I want to show you kind of gear setup, you know, what I'm using to try to make it work um, in terms of this McCampbell. That's it, McCampbell and uh, whatever the other one was. And five tokens, which is nothing to sneeze at. I'm always excited about tokens because uh, tokens are always very useful. So, and you can see Powell uh, was capping some zones with me. It looks like uh, their F2G had a little harder time putting that together. So I've got the uh, parade camouflage on it, uh, which is the camouflage that comes, uh, you know, came to us alpha and beta testers along with one of the nose stripings that matches just for the extra XP since I'm grinding this. Um, I put the lightweight power plant on for a little bit of extra wiggle, uh, trying to keep these guns on target a little better. And, you know, speed-wise, it's just fine. You know, the reality is against other heavies, I'm going to try to turn fight them. Uh, because of my better maneuverability, I'm not going to try to outrun them. Uh, against light fighters, hopefully I'm in a good energy state and can just pass on like the P-51H. Um, the extra, you know, little bit of cruise speed or boost speed there probably is not going to make a difference. Uh, and then also, of course, gas-operated action, just to put as much DPS into these as I can. It's not great. And you can see 14-second turn time. That's less than the German heavies uh, and the Brit heavies, so that makes it a little easier to uh, get around on things. And, um, and of course, there's not any Japanese heavies up this high. The gas-operated action, you know, you kind of needed to get the DPS out. I know it says 749, but again, your effective DPS, I guess, especially against heavy targets, bombers, ground attack aircraft, you know, that have high resistances is just going to be sad um, and a struggle. So, and I'll show you kind of what I mean here, right? 600 rounds per minute, um, which means you're dropping out 10 rounds per second. Your damage per second is 1A. It means each of those shells is doing 18 damage. And against something with high resistances, you know, 18 damage is, is going to be the median point, right? There's a there's a plus minus, so 18 is the average. So the reality is it's probably a 15 to 21, something like that. So if you get a low roll and you're against a, a heavy target with high resistances, high armor, you, you, you may hit not do any damage. Um, you know, compare that to uh, the 20 millimeter Mauser over here, um, which should be uh, in, in, re in reality, uh, if I remember right anyway, the Colt Mark 12 uh, was based on or a development of uh, the 213C. Uh, they're both revolver cannons, which is, um, you know, think of a six shooter. Uh, that's what's happening. It's not a Gatling gun in the sense that it has six barrels. It has one barrel and six chambers, though, uh, that it's rotating through. Uh, so it overheats quickly, which is modeled in game. Um, but again, you know, it's just there. And the interesting thing, though, is I, I also don't know if there's a bug 
or if it's just because of the target selection, because the 20s, um, obviously the 213s, don't feel that way. They feel like they chunk damage pretty good um, and pretty quickly. And maybe it's just because you're fighting more of uh, light targets uh, than anything else. Don't know, because it was 700 rounds a minute and 200 DPS. You know, the problem should even be more severe on um, the 213s, and it's not. So uh, that's an interesting thought, a conundrum for someone to dig into maybe and uh, see what's happening there. So other than that, um, we are uh, you know, you know, trying to do this spring ratings. This is the last week, you got experimental gun sight. The best thing about that is the ability to double roll into accuracy against moving targets. In other words, a very a much higher auto aim, uh, which is fantastic for some of the things we're dealing with. And, and here's what you need to know for spring ratings. Uh, you know, unless you want internet trophy points, which, you know, I don't care about, and hopefully most of you don't care about either, you just need to be in the top 500. Um, and you can see right here with 800 points at the end of day one, you know, I'm sitting in the top 250. So uh, my goal for myself is about 1,000 capture points per day, per time period. I'm only going for two and three. I'm not going to go for the period one I just don't care enough uh, and I'm not looking to seal club anyone so but for period two for tiers five to seven and tiers eight to ten I would love to have one each of those guys and uh, kind of be able to uh, just you know put them on some aircraft where they would do some good things and you can see the the competition at the top is fierce um, you know but you don't have to be that fierce um, you know just aim for 800 a thousand capture points a day you should be fairly high up there at least on the NA server the uh, EU server is, of course, a little more populated, so maybe not that one. But there you have it. I uh, hope you enjoyed, uh, and I do apologize. I'm only going to get one video out again this week, unfortunately. Last week was sick, had company in town. This week, unfortunately, work has kicked up, and I'm going to have to travel a little bit. And so I probably am not going to get a second video out for you guys. If I do, it'll just be a gameplay video with no commentary, and I'll work on that, but no guarantees. Anyway, uh, good luck to you in the ratings. You know, Try and pop out what you can here um, in terms of capture points. It's not bad. It's not as good as the Chevron one, but at least this one promotes some decent gameplay in terms of capping things and holding on to things. Um, and at least somewhat uh, aiming for a win instead of just for personal points. Um, and uh, like I said, good luck to you. Hope you're doing well on it. And uh, I hope I can catch you in the next one. Until then, good luck and good hunting.